Welcome to Our Heritage. We are so glad you joined us today. My first guest is not a new person to the program, but he's here to talk about one of my favorite projects that's going on. Jerome Loving from American Legion, welcome back. Thank you for having me back, and I'm just thrilled to be here to talk about what's dear to our heart. It's that's heavens. right. Reese Across America is a program nationwide to put Reese on veterans' graves, correct? Correct. As veterans' graves, all of our national cemeteries throughout the United States and 24 foreign countries. All right. I love that part. But I know last year you didn't do all the cemeteries. Somebody had a big project going around counting veterans. How did y'all handle that? Well, last year we, uh, we only did the city cemetery, over 700 veterans. But then a new commander and said, we're going to do more this year. <laughs> and then another thing is uh, Angie Osteen said, why should we choose which veteran get a wreath? Right. With that, we moved forward and decided we're going to do as many was the first thing. And then we say, put a wreath and a flag on every veteran's grave of Coffee County. Wonderful. And we say of Coffee County because there are veterans that live and, and die in Coffee County, but buried across the you know, adjacent lie. counties. So we, we took on some of those and walked and counted. <laughs> walked and counted. Yes. During rattlesnake season, right? Uh, well, February, February, oh, well, time, February that's, that's, time. That's, that's better. That's yeah, better. February. I was worried about y'all no, there for February. a minute. No, <laughs> February. We started early this year. <laughs> well, tell, I know you've done fundraisers. I know you yes. did the Boston bus and things like that. And you've, yes. you've asked for vol volunteers to donate money. What is your status at this point in time? Well, our status, we, we started first 51 cemeteries, mm -hmm. over 2,100 veterans. And with flags and reefs, we were needing I mean, $34,319.25. Mm -hmm. That's what we started out needing. So far, we raised $24,321. Oh, right. Much much better than last year. Much better yeah. than last well, year. Well, last year we started late. And, and, and the right. way we got there is we started early with fundraisers. Mm -hmm. uh, Boston butt. Uh, plate sale, mm -hmm. standing out asking for donations at Harvard and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the, the public has, to a point, donated, sponsored mm -hmm. graves, you know, for their, right. their loved ones. Uh, so, but we're not there yet. But we're getting closer. We're, we're getting close because we got, we got some cemetery that, that we need to sort of speed up on a little bit. Okay. And, and like, if I may, I want to call them out because yeah. there are people that got relative veteran, veteran relatives that are buried at these cemeteries. And if you're out there and you hear me talk about your cemetery and you've got a fundraiser going, a project and going to turn it in, please, uh, we understand. But I just need to <laughs> let the general public know at this sure. time some that we, we may need help. We've been doing pretty good with the city cemetery, but still there are people that have relatives I know that have not contributed. Mm -hmm. Now, why are we making, doing all the fundraisers, first of all, is they are veterans, World War I, World War II, maybe Korea, that do not have relatives here to take care of their, right. their grave. So, City Cemetery, uh, Salem Church uh, Cemetery, Satilla Memorial, the Oak Grove, uh, this is the Pearson Oak Grove, uh, Carver Baptist, and I know they've told me they got a fundraiser going to, mm -hmm. to take care of theirs. Uh, Hebron, Rita Branch, and I, I've been mm -hmm. told they're going to take care of theirs. Right. But at this point, I don't have it. This is what I'm trying <laughs> to say. I don't have it. Lone Hill, I've been told they're going to take care of theirs, but don't have it. Bethany, D. Berry, we got some credible people that said they're going to take care of those. I'm not worried, but at this point, this is for the family members that have not contributed right. to let you know we, we don't have it. And uh, that was just 11 of the major cemeteries, and mm -hmm. one more in Nichols is Chatterton Church. Uh, and then we got those in Jacksonville. Now, of the 51, that sounds like about uh, 11, 13, 15, about 17 cemeteries out of 51 that we may have some concern about. Right. And we still got to November the 16th. I, is, I was going to ask you the deadline. November the 16th. But th don't do me like don't, we did don't last do year. Don't do November 15th. <laughs> no. Let's get it done before November. Yes, Let's, please. let's don't wait to the last minute. Okay. I also know somebody has to put all that out. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, now there, there's, a, there's a, some dates I want you to remember. December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. That's when we're going to put the flags out. Now, 51 cemeteries, and we got the Veterans Organizations of Coffee County, that's the two American Legion posts, and the VFW post 5976. We're doing this. But we don't have enough veterans to do this. Mm -hmm. And if some of us are getting a little old, too. You know? <laughs> so it will be helpful if families and churches 
try to put together a little group for, for that day to be at the cemetery and oh, correspond with me. To, Let me to, know. Okay. Let me know you're going to be there because we will bring the flags around and put them out. Okay. Now, December 7th, we control. But then before December 17th, which December 17th is our program at the city cemetery, we're going to get reefs, but we don't know what day yet. Oh. They will call me maybe a day or so in advance and say, hey, the reefs will be there now. Let's go. <laughs> so once I find that out, it's going to hit the uh, Facebook and <laughs> email, text, the emails going out. Same thing. We're going to need help. Mm -hmm. And then the big project is as they begin to, either, either live reefs, mm -hmm. well, as they begin to die, right. individual churches and organizations need to remove them from the graves because right. we will help but we need that help to get them off there. Okay. My mind's just twirling here go, with people go. I know that I, we need to call. Okay. And it would might help if the folks at the churches or the cemeteries in the churches combined, because most of the old country churches have a cemetery bomb. If somebody at that church would take the leap forward and volunteer to be the contact person. That would be, I think that's a wonderful idea, and I'm going to spread that word for you. That would help, and I'll give my numbers in every time we put something in the newspaper. <laughs> I don't mind, call me, let's talk about it. 912-592-6413. Now, I will tell you, uh, CCA mm -hmm. was wonderful last year, and they said they'll be there again this year. Okay. The NGROTC, outstanding again. They said they'll be there. Now, that was our major contribution to the city cemetery. Right. But if we can time it and, you know, deliver it a reef, right work in our favor, we can do this so that we can have maximum number of those kids. Right. I was also suggested that, you know, uh, there are Sunday school classes. Yes, ma'am. There's yes, Boy sir. Scout, Girl Scout. Y'all, we can use you. Please call me. Let's, That's right. It's a great I, community service so, and a veteran service. So far, I, tell, I got no complaints about the contribution and support from, the, since I've been back in Douglas. Right. You know, I, I, I uh, was like a new phase, but I wasn't. I, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I asked, and they've been given. Yeah. And I, I hope they see what they've given to me has gone back to our community. And, and that's what we're doing here. And it's such a great purpose. Oh, oh it's such a great purpose. <laughs> yes, it is. We don't want them forgotten. No, can't do it. Just don't. You know what? Uh, I have something today for you that we're going to let you auction off as a fundraiser. It's a, a mailbox and it's for veterans and we'll get a picture of it and Johnny will post it and okay. I want y'all to make some money off of it. We're going to do our best, to, you know. I, we don't want to wear the public eye because they may get tired of seeing it. Hey. But, but, <laughs> but I tell you, we, we did a, uh, we was out at Harvest one day and we had uh, 30 something dollars worth of change in, a, in the jar. Yeah. A penny will take it. That's right. Because those pennies add up. That's right. So that thirty that's two reefs. That's two reefs. You know, there so you go. I mean everybody can't give a lot, but Everybody anything that you can give, we'll take it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So glad you came and we're gonna have an update on this in okay. October. That'll work. So I will mark you on the calendar and remind you. Okay. Okay? One last cover about sure. why is this so dear to me? I'm one of those veterans that one day. You're going to be there. One day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing all I can now. Maybe people can remember that veterans are important and there are things we can do while we're here to do great to honor work them, for them. For yes. their service. Thank you very much, Jerome. Thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 
My next guest is Maggie Crosby from the big town of Hufford, Georgia, and we're going to talk about Lone Hill Methodist Church, aren't we? United. Oh yeah, United. I keep forgetting that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, really, I should not be the one doing this, Mr. Elias Lott, yes. or either Jim Cottingham, who has all of my information that was given, passed down to me by my mama, has it, and I understand he's out of town. But anyway, I gathered up some information that I had at home and tried to get this feeble mind working <laughs> this morning, and I have put together uh, things that I can remember from the history of Lone Hill, old Lone Hill Church. Lone Hill Church began in 1848. Not in a church building, mm -hmm. per se, but it was the early saddlers would gather under the, which is now the oldest eastern red cedar known in the United States. Oh, that just, the old tree in the cemetery. The, yes, and the Indians would, would gather under that tree as well and smoke their peace pipes. I've been told that. I did. <laughs> you don't remember that. I don't remember that. <laughs> anyway, getting getting back to the uh, early settlers, they would worship underneath the shade of that tree until a circuit rider, preacher, would come to preach the word of God. So it was not until 1854 that Lone Hill had a sanctuary. This sanctuary was built by strong men of the community. Not just physically strong, but strong in faith. Lone Hill got its name from a preacher who came to preach once a month. After arriving at the, for the 11 o'clock service, no one had begun to come by one o'clock. Well, he left and went to the home of Aunt Fanny Gaskins, who was my great-grandmother. He shared with her that I was the lonesomest hill, thereby given the name of Lone Hill. The founders of Lone Hill Church were the Lots, the Newburns, the Douglases, the Wards, Smiths, Peterson, and Crosses. The original church was small in size, but mighty in strength. The old pot-bellied stove in the front middle and the pews were hand-built with slats. Now I remember those. And right now I'm gonna just ad-lib a little bit and tell you about a story okay. that happened to me on those slatted pews. I always sat between my grandma and my mama so that I didn't, I didn't budge, I didn't <laughs> move. Well, unbeknownst to me, there was a wasp nest underneath <laughs> one of the, that pew that I was seated on. And one popped me. Well, being a child, I screamed. I don't know what the preacher did, but the, Miss Fanny and Mr. E.R. Cross sat right behind us in Long Hill. And Miss Fanny found out what had happened and she looked over at her husband and she said, now Mr. Cross, you just get out some of that chewing tobacco and put, give it and put it on that wasp thing for her and uh -oh. it'll quit hurting. <laughs> Now that, this was going on during church service. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I was told that pigs used to go under our <laughs> church and root, and sometimes they would make so much noise until sometimes somebody would go out and shoo them off and uh, to go on with the church service. In the late 1930s, and I still hadn't been born, the church was moved back from its original site and a major renovation was done to improve the overall appearance, both inside and outside 
of the sanctuary. I didn't know that. I thought that was the original.